The uh, Shadow Leveling Up Secretary, Lisa Nandy, is with us now. Your thoughts on those comments, first of all? I mean, increasingly it feels to me that the Conservative Party isn't just out of touch with the reality of what's happening in communities across this country, but they're living on another planet. We've got, at the moment, a crisis that is engulfing families and businesses across the country, record inflation. It's not that people aren't budgeting properly, it's that they simply cannot afford the basics. And that is a damning indictment of... 12 years of Conservative government. I've got a food bank in Wigan, which you'll be familiar with, Kay, the brick, which is now giving out cold boxes because families can't actually afford to cook the food that they were being given. These are families who, in many instances, have two parents who are both in work and yet they can't afford to feed their kids. We've got to get help to people now. We've got to get money back into people's pockets. And most of all, we've got to stop with this sort of patronising rubbish that this is somehow the fault of families who've seen their incomes drop dramatically in the last few Months. Lee Anderson is a former miner. He says his uh, his comments have been taken out of context and what he was saying is that people can't cook properly, that they're not aware of how to cook from scratch. So as a result, that's why they go to the food bank. Well, people go to the food bank because they don't have enough money and they can't afford the basics. Increasingly now in this country, what we've got is a lot of families who are working harder than ever before. You know, I, I remember my parents working pretty hard when I was growing up, but now you've got families that have two or three jobs and are working on shifts around the clock, struggling with childcare costs, struggling with energy bills, struggling with food prices, struggling with rent and mortgage payments. It is a perfect storm. And at the time when they most need help, not only is it not forthcoming from the government, but we've also got tax hikes on the way. That just isn't good enough. We need an emergency budget from this government and we need to stop this sort of patronising rubbish about this being the fault of people who are working harder than ever before. But Shadow Secretary said there is no magic money tree. Where are they going to get the money from? Well, we could put a uh, windfall tax on the oil and gas producers. But it only gets £2 billion, made, times, doesn't it? But they, but they made record profits and surely the principle that those with the broadest shoulders should bear the greatest burden at times of national crisis has to apply. The government is backing those record profits over families in this country who are struggling. We could get up to £600 back into people's pockets. It, um, we, could, we could do more than that. We could cancel the national insurance rise and we could start to invest in this country again. Only this morning we've released figures that show that in England every region stands to lose out because the money that used to come back to us through the European Union has been cut by this government and it's cost our English regions to the tune of a billion pounds. That just simply is unacceptable. We've got to get this economy moving. We've got to get growth back into the economy. We're forecast to have the slowest growth rate of any of the G7 countries next year, and that is a direct consequence of a government that doesn't back its own people. But even by, the, by Labour's figures, £2 billion would be raised by a windfall tax, which would be about £600 per household. That, that's nowhere near enough. Every pound matters at the moment. The people that Lee Anderson was talking about in such condescending terms yesterday are people who are getting to the end of the week, opening the food cupboard and finding that there's nothing to get them through the weekend. I think we've got to get money back into people's pockets right now and up to £600 would be a good start. Cancelling the national insurance rise, as I said, but also investing in things like retrofitting homes, which almost every major business leader now says is a no-brainer to reduce energy bills. If we started investing in people in this country Where again, we could see real action. Well, we, we had a period of record low interest rates and during that time we were urging the government to use that moment to invest. This is not just about spending money. People don't have a lot of money and we've got to spend every penny wisely. But we, it's about investing in people so that we get growth back into the economy so that people don't have to pay such high taxes and can afford to make But where would the money come from, the retrofitting properties? Well, let me give you an example. The, recently, the government, just casually, the Chancellor, with one stroke of a pen, wrote off over £4 billion in fraud uh, that had been committed during COVID. He just said, we're not going after that money. He was heavily criticised for doing so by select committees in Parliament, by uh, major business leaders, by the Labour Party as well. Surely we should be using every penny at our disposal to get help to people now and start investing in our economy. I'm just hearing as I'm talking to you in my ear that uh, the Finland president has said that they do want to join NATO. Thoughts on that? Well, I, I mean, I'm a big supporter of NATO. I think it's been an incredibly important alliance. And I think what you're seeing at the moment is the actions of President Putin in Russia are bringing 
the Western world much closer together um, and a determination to stand together in a way that we haven't seen for a long time. It was only a few years ago that we had President Trump in the United States attacking NATO and attacking the contribution that European countries were making. You've had endless squabbling between our government and the governments across the European Union. And now I think we're starting to see us come together and stand together in the face of Russian aggression. I think that's a very good thing. And with your former Foreign Secretary hat on, though, do you not feel that potentially it could put Finland in, in a, a more difficult position, rather uh, an unsafe position, rather than the one they're in at the moment, which is one of neutrality? Well, I think, I think that countries coming together and standing together is really important. It's a decision for Finland about whether they seek membership of NATO and then it'll be a decision for NATO countries about whether that's accepted. But I think what you are seeing is, as a consequence of increasing Russian aggression, that increasingly countries feel that NATO is worth backing and supporting after many years in which we've seen it under attack, and I think that's a profoundly good thing. What are we going to do about the Northern Ireland Protocol? I think we should seek a veterinary agreement which would reduce a lot of the barriers, um, uh, borders that have been created and start to reduce the tensions that have been created around this as well. I think we should start with pragmatic, practical steps rather than this overblown rhetoric that we've seen in the last few years. Most people in this country, I think, had thought that Brexit was done. We've got to start moving on and we've got to support people on the island of Ireland. Instead, what we've got is successive foreign secretaries just ramping up the rhetoric and the tensions. And, you know, in the last few days, we've seen the European Union threaten to cancel the trade deal because the foreign secretary has threatened um, to cancel elements of the Northern Ireland Protocol, which her prime minister negotiated, which he agreed, which he said was a great deal. This just isn't good for anyone in this country. It's particularly bad for people in Northern Ireland. And it's about time the government stopped mucking around and behaving like children, Should squabbling scrapped, and sorting it out. Should it be scrapped? No, I think we've got to make it work. And I think there are pragmatic and practical measures that we can take to make it work. But it takes goodwill on all sides. I've been critical That's of the... That's not forthcoming, though, is it? Well, it could be forthcoming. I've been critical of the European Union at times for ramping up the rhetoric, but I think there's no question that at the moment the big problem is that we've got a government that isn't serious about trying to find a resolution to this. I'm disappointed by that. I thought when Liz Truss was appointed that it might herald the start of a new approach. It's not in anyone's interest in this country to have an ongoing war with our closest neighbours. We've got to calm down the rhetoric, start to cooperate, not least because, as we've just been discussing, we've got serious Russian aggression, uh, war breaking out in, in Europe for the first time in a long time mm -hmm. and we just simply can't afford any more of this. Yeah. Um, just before we let you go, coming up to Wigan next week, yeah. what can we expect? Uh, well, I think you'll find a lot of people who have had a very, very tough time over the last 12 years, but don't complain about it, are getting on with things. You know what Wigan's like. People stick together and they club together. And one of the great things that's happened over the last 12 years in the toughest of times with austerity, sort of turbocharging decline, is that we've drawn on the biggest asset that we've got, which is our community. People are close, they look after one another, and we've stepped up to help people at the, the darkest of moments. Mm. I think you'll find a lot of that spirit in Wigan next week and um, I know that people are really looking forward to having you. Oh, that's lovely. Um, we're coming to see the Brick as well, of course, you just mentioned the Great Brick. Stuff. And also going for um, a drink at a working man's club. Oh, well, I <laughs> look forward to my invitation. <laughs> you can come, yeah, yeah. I'll have a pint and a half for the lady. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks we'll very see much. you then. <laughs>